Okay, moving on to the South Lafourche Industrial Mobile Home Park, PCL and Associates. Yeah, Onshore's uh, contract on this project, they have everything put in. Uh, they're making the final electrical tie-ins <coughs> to the sewer plant. I was scheduled for today and tomorrow. Um, we're waiting on power from Antigy. Once that's done, we're, we're pretty much done. So we should be done by the end of the week? End of the week, sometime early next week, depending on the weather. I'm okay. Sure. All right. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to other projects, the Fouchon Pavilion. Yeah, Onshore is the contractor. They have everything formed up for the slab. Um, they're still waiting on concrete uh, from the concrete plant in Fouchon. Uh, we're being told that that should be in the next couple of weeks. We should have concrete available to make the pour. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Hurricane Ida update. Uh, I'll just give you a project status updates on, on some of our projects going on. Um, this uh, main administrative office building here, um, we should, uh, we started advertising on June 21st. We have a pre-bid conference later, tomorrow actually, July 14th. And uh, the bid opening is uh, scheduled for July 26th. Um, the public boat launch bathhouse, later on the agenda, we have to approve uh, the bids for that, receive bids on July 6th. Um, the apparent uh, responsive low bidder is Grand Isle Shipyard at $319,653.05. Um, the operations center in Fouchon, the EOC and the ops uh, warehouse, uh, we started advertising on July 1st. We have a pre-bid meeting on July 20th and we plan to open bids on August 4th. The uh, boat lift roof, the front marina, Star Harbor Marina, and the Nerby Collins Marina Wharves. Um, we started advertising on July 1st. Our pre-bid meeting is on July 18th, and we plan to open bids on July 28th. Uh, for the airport terminal building and the airport hangar building, um, we should be going out advertising for bid on that. Um, by Friday, July 29th. Uh, for the temporary admin building, the Galliano office behind this building, um, the project repairs are underway. Uh, we, have, we have a final coat of paint left on that building, the cinder block warehouse building. Um, and we have a final coat of paint, some roof edging, and the suspended ceiling that's under repair now. And then the airport T hangers, airport electrical building, airport maintenance shop. Um, all the materials are ordered and uh, should be coming in soon. As soon as that comes in, GIS, uh, Grand Isle Shipyard is going to start uh, repairing those. Do you have any questions for those projects? In the main building, okay. yes. we have insurance. Why should we have to wait for bids instead we, of the insurance company? To we don't have insurance. We don't? No. no. We did not have wind and hail on any of our facilities. We never have. We never had. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. To be located in Fouchon, that we don't have that. We never had Wind and Hill because it was unaffordable. The board made a decision not to purchase that. Now, I can tell you this we have uh, quotes, or now getting quotes on Wind and Hill uh, for, our, for our buildings, and um, that'll be coming to you soon uh, to, to make a decision on if we're going to do that or not. So we're still waiting on this building to move forward or? no no no. we're moving forward that's what i just i just updated we're under advertisement okay. um we started on june 21st we have a pre-bid tomorrow right. and we're opening bids on july 26th i misunderstood and, i thought i was and we will get building. some fema relief absolutely okay. I, I don't know if we yeah. can make that clear for our, our our audience to understand we will get fema relief for our repairs for a lot of our buildings that is correct that is correct for all, in fact, we have FEMA dollars coming for every one of our buildings. Thank you, Mr. Director. That's all I have under uh, Hurricane Ida projects. Um, all right, now we have a presentation from South Louisiana Economic Council, or SLEC, Mr. Vic LaFont, Executive Director. Thank you all for giving me this time. Uh, you have a report, I think you should have it by now, I'll ask you to take a look at that and you have it at some time. Uh, I've been told to be brief and do the best I can. There's been a lot going on. Uh, in my shop and in the region. Um, let's see, go to the next slide. Oh, you got it? Which one? 
I don't want to spend too much time on this. You all know about South Louisiana Economic Council. We formed back in 1984 by a handful of businesses with House at Nichols, which is the neutral site. And again, uh, we're, full, we're one of eight regional EDOs recognized by the state of Louisiana across the state. Um, my, my service area is the Bayou Parishes of Assumption, Lafourche, Terrebonne, and St. Mary. I want to look at this map real close. It's really simple. But um, right now, if you really look at our strengths, the yellow part is the, the waterways. Our biggest strength are our waterways. What's keeping it and tying it all together are our water ports. And we're finding this out more and more every day with the company we've hired to survey this region. The people that I work with very closely on a daily basis uh, are the local economic development org organization representative with the parish. For us, it's Christy Lumpkin and Lafouche. Uh, there's a new guy, Cohen Landry in Terrebonne, and up in, uh, in St. Mary, it's Evan Boudreaux, and this young man, Leonard, up in, in Assumption, who just really got hired. The strongest and the most active parishes are Lafouche, Terrebonne, and St. Mary, as far as industrial development goes. But there's nothing that I do in a vacuum. These people don't only see what I do, they have input on what I do. Um, nobody knows the parishes better than the locals anyway. This is my team. You may recognize some of these people. Uh, you've worked with them before, uh, and I, I know you have, but I've got Deanna Lafon, who handles my business development. I've got um, Cody Blanchard, who handles my communications, Nesta Navarro International, mm -hmm. Laurie LeBlanc handles my energy and diversification, Lacey Melanson, Coastal Initiatives, and of course, Linda is our business manager. What we've been doing, and I've got to tell you all, since I've been doing this for 32 years at this same place, and always my reactive, my proactive has always been retention, keeping what I have. Uh, companies were just coming, and it was to accommodate them. And they always, always, almost ever want waterfront property. So my job, my challenge has always been to accommodate that. They didn't care about hurricanes. It's about getting to the market, and that's what they were about. My reactive, my reactive, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, my reactive, no, that was my proactive. My reactive was to uh, prospect and recruit, bring in new companies, which I've always done. But I was always doing more one than the other. Now, it's swapped. My proactive is recruiting new companies in. We've lost a lot of companies, okay? And now my reactive is keeping what we have. So what we did, Entergy and I got together, and SLEC got together, and we hired the site selection firm. And basically, we've asked them to target, last year we targeted 300 companies, surveyed 280, ended up with about 11, no, 12 interviews with companies that were interested in coming here. Six stateside, five international. One we landed, uh, and that was Sea Automation. And I think y'all have gotten some word from that before. Uh, There's a company that was going to move. Actually, they wanted a distribution center for what they were doing with the all field. Um, they looked at Port Fouchon, Port of Terrebonne, Port of St. Mary, I'm sorry, Morgan City. They ended up saying, okay, we're going to get a distribution shop in Port Fouchon. We'll, bring our manufacturing to something they didn't plan to do from Houston to here. That means it went from 30 employees to 200, the 230. The proposal that Terrebonne gave them was a build to suit building, okay? And of course, they need to be close to the market, which is the offshore <coughs> activity, and the distribution centers to be put there. They committed to come. We're still working on them. They were working on their clientele base, then enters Hurricane Ida, okay? Now, they're still there. They're still planning up, but they understand hurricanes. They live in Houston, okay? But Houston is just too expensive for them to operate. So they plan to still come here. I'll give you a, a better report once we get a handle on visiting with them again. Um, now, what we, we got now, we've got, let's see, total companies so far this year, 69. We have two in the interviews. We've got two pending. Let's talk about certified sites. Okay, certified site program. This is a state program that gets, um, that helps particular sites in our region make it shovel ready for any, and attractive for any prospect coming in. Meaning that <coughs> you have been completely vetted. Um, um, it's got, you got to have at least 18, 18 it's, got, it's, got, it's got to be ready for 18 months for someone to move in there. There's some open ends. The state will pay 75% of whatever work you need done, getting it done, and 25% goes to the for people who own it. Um, Chet knows this. We have we have uh, 
one in St. Mary that we've done. We've had Rebecca, uh, Jake's property over in Rebecca in Terrebonne. Right now, we have another one in St. Mary um, and another one, in, well, actually two in St. Mary, but we've just got approval, the initial site in at the Galliana Airport. So we're excited about that. That's our next step. Okay. Let's talk about that. Um, you know, in the last five or six years, y'all know this. Uh, y'all have experienced, y'all have been through it. <laughs> Uh, we've, it's, we've, it, we've witnessed two downturns in the major oil industry. We've been through a major pandemic. I'm sorry, but Washington, D.C. does not like oil and gas. It doesn't help us. And then a darn hurricane comes right up our alley. So we've been hit pretty hard. Now, people are pretty resilient. But you've got to be able to have enough time to get up from the previous blow to be able to take the next punch. And, and, and so we, everything's changed. I remember taking a ride after the storm as far as I could go, or they let me go, and everything's changed. The whole economic landscape is gone. Okay? Yeah. Nothing's the same. I mean, I don't even know sometimes what my services are, okay? Uh, trying to help people. I'm still in recovery. I'm, I'm still helping companies right now. So what I did, we hired a company, a third party, third objective company, uh, to come in, and they're going to survey the companies, finding out what are the needs, what should my services be. That's number one. We're going to have roundtable discussions. The ports are going to be one group, um, and we want to know, you know, what are the needs of the companies. You know, and the other thing we're going to do that, is Vic. That's part of the strategic plan. Yes, you're doing yes, the activity. But there's three parts to it. Let, let me let me break it down to that. That's going to make it real simple. Number one, what should select services be? Number two. Who should manage it? I mean, it's been since 1984, and I've got, a, I've got a board right now, they represent different parts of the industry. The times have changed. Who should be managing SLEC today, right now? And the third one, of course, is who's gonna pay for it? It's gonna be a combination of state, parish, private industry, what have you. So those are the three things we wanna, we wanna get to. You'll see the timeline right here. When those are the things I just explained. Yes, there it is. So, let me break it down to this. We're going to come, and I think we have a schedule to do it in October, Chad. We're going to call in everyone, and we're going to have roundtable discussions. We're going to have the ports. That's going to be one. We're going to have the parish presence. That's two. We're going to have three emerging energies. That's Laurie. And four is going to be something on cybersecurity. And then at noontime, we're going to bring in a guest speaker. We're going to unveil the new plan. What were the results of this study? What's the new SLEC? Okay. It's going to be what it's going to do, what it's going to look like. Huge undertaking. This is probably the most exciting thing we're doing right now. <laughs> we're doing a lot of exciting things with emerging en energies. Look, we've been at the tail, you, you guys are already into it, of new alternate fuels, okay? It's not going away, it's there. We, we just gotta take it to the next level. I was talking to Johnny. Uh, the major oil companies have been in this game. I don't think I'll get enough credit for it, but you all have been in this game. You've already met your 10-year goals, okay? So we formed a group, we met for the first time. And it has, and it was um, companies, and I said that list right here. You might recognize them: Schwess, Hornbeck, Danos, Crosby, Gulf Island, Wind Marines, Morrison Energy, New Industries, and we had the full port directors. And there was a lot of enthusiasm. You saw it, and uh, we didn't realize that a lot of people had the same questions as to which way do we go next. So we're excited that we were coming together in one voice. The group is going to now call, be called Emerging Energies Coalition. So remember that. You're going to be hearing a lot about this group, just like you have LA-1, Organza to the Gulf, Restore Retreat. By the way, we've got a new director of uh, Restore Retreat, Representative Joe right there. We're glad to have him. Um, so just to, that you know, we're going to be calling in. We're going to have an event. It's going to be in September. And we're going to call in the four, four of the major oil companies and actually <clears throat> present to us what their plan, what's, what's their program in alternate fuels. A lot of people don't know. We want, we want to work with the oil companies. We want, we want to work with what's already there, whether it's carbon capture, wind, solar, whatever. Okay, that's what we want to do. It's going to be by invitation only, and we're going to have a reception after. I'll wrap up with this. I'll finish up with this right here. Um, we have, this, we're part of a huge grant, uh, EDA grant, this Build It Better, with the GNO Inc., SLAC, BRAC, the Baton Rouge Air Chamber, one Acadiana, 
and a number of universities, and is for hydrogen fuel development. I'm not going to get into the science, but we've been given, um, we, we, actually we made the first round, we've been asked to submit the second round, and we just recently were asked to submit budgets, so it's looking pretty good. We are real optimistic about that. That, um, Chad, Johnny, we're going to try and tie this into the, the new coalition, okay, uh, to see what, how we can facilitate that. Um, by, okay, we, I don't know if you all know this, because I haven't had the, uh, the resources to build it up further than what it is. We have what's called a Bayou Business uh, Resiliency Center at Nichols in my conference room. It's completely hooked up with a satellite generator, everything. But it's for business recovery, not life and property. It cannot first respond to us. It's the first regional BEOC that's connected to the statewide BEOC in the state. I am applying for grant money to build a program around it. Look, we don't know what's going to happen, okay? But we can get ready for it because we kind of know what's going to happen, whether it's a hurricane or a downturn or all gas industry. Bayou Region Business Incubator, Nichols got $3.5 million to stand up and incubate it. You all know where the, um, if you're familiar with Thibodeau, where the old uh, Citizens Bank is, the old Capital One downtown, they've purchased that and that's going to be the new business incubator center with a twist toward coastal. I'm the chairman of that board. Coastal Technical Assistance Center. Chad, have y'all got a, have y'all had a presentation by Lacey Melanson yet on CTAC? The coastal not, technical not directly okay. to the board. I'd like to, I'd like to ask y'all if it's okay that I send her, if we could mm -hmm. schedule her here. I think it's very worth sure. doing that. But if you remember, uh, when they started mentioning the CTAC, <coughs> uh, well, CPRA projects, um, you know, take you back when Gary Graves was chairman of it way back when they were doing the three, five-year plan. They went to all the communities that they knew projects were coming to and got their buy-in in it too. But what they did, they raised expectations that if you were a small business there, you would participate in the project coming to your town soon. Well, that's, they didn't intend that, but that's what happened. So when the first announcement came, I think it was in terrible, um, all companies started calling. They started calling CPRA. They don't do that. They deal with prime contractors. Um, they started calling the chambers, they called me, uh, ended up in the governor's office, who threw it over to the secretary of the Department of Economic Development, Don Pearson, who called me saying, look, most of these calls are coming from your region, what's going on? Somebody help these people. They have the idea that they can participate in these projects. He said, there's no mechanism to do that. I said, well, y'all better come up with some because there's too many phone calls. So I got with him and we came up with what's called the Coastal Technical Assistance Center, real simple. What her job is, Lisa Melissa, the young lady we hired, is doing a great job. We're only in my third year. It's a statewide program, and it's local right now, but eventually it will be statewide. We try and connect the small subcontractors with the prime contracts that have had to bid on these projects. That's all we do, okay? Now, we'll vet you, okay? We send, take seven things to make a good business. Your finances, your, your legal, whatever, HR. If you're five out of seven, you're a player. Yeah, if you're three out of seven, you need some help, but that's okay. I'm an economic development agency. I'll get you to help, okay? So the idea is to get, keep the dollars as much as we can in the communities that these projects are operating. At the same time, we're developing an expertise within the region of vendors that can participate in any type of recovery, physical recovery, uh, construction, whatever, after disaster. You know, Nobody knows really who to contact after that. Everybody wants a job, though, doing it. So we want to see if we can clean that up a little bit through the Recovery and Resilience Center. We might connect those two dots. And of course, we have the Manning Academy. That's really the bulk of it. I'm going to ask you to look at, those, look at my report, please. You know, please call me if you have any questions about this at all. And uh, I'll explain to you. Lots going on. Look for the change. A lot of changes. But it's time. All right, I mean, great. I'll admit right here, um, um, you know, it's, I've been at it 32 years as a really close friend of mine recommended, you know, Vic, you want to plan your exit. Don't wait one day until it's time for you to go, and they tell you to go. So I've done that, and I'm doing that. But I, don't, I want to leave the organization a whole lot better off than I found it. So that's what I'll do. And I'll need, I'll need your help. I'll need, personally, some of you guys, and I, I need all of you. So I appreciate it. Any questions? Any questions for Vic? Good. Thank you, Vic. Right. Thank, Thank you for the presentation. Vic, I Thank sure you. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Any public comment? All right. Next, we're going to committee reports. Executive committee members are Chucky Sheridan, Chairman, Rodney J. Gisclair, Larry Griffin, Jim LaFont.
First, we have consider approving the purchase of an additional helipad improvement, parking lot improvement, and terminal foundations for rotorcraft leasing and amendment of leaves covering these improvements. All right, we've had uh, numerous discussions about uh, this, and uh, we basically finalized that uh, the additional helipad improvements of one million sixty thousand four hundred sixty-seven dollars, the foundation for the for the um, terminal, uh, one hundred twenty-two thousand seven hundred ten dollars, an additional parking area of eighty-eight thousand six hundred sixty-five dollars, all estimated uh, or cost based off of the um, the project itself, uh, for a total of one million two hundred seventy-one thousand eight hundred forty-two dollars. Now. Those numbers are certainly pending a final um, appraisal uh, of of those um, those three different projects, and I'll hand it over to Bryce for any further comment. Right. As soon as we can get that appraisal approved, uh, we're asking that y'all approve today purchasing those improvements and then turning around and leasing them back to Rotorcraft, just like we've done uh, in the past with the majority of their facility at that location. So a motion would represent what you just said? Correct. I'd like to move, Mr. President. Second a motion by Mr. John Nelson. Second, Second. by Chris Colley. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the request from John W. Stone, oil distributors, for a landlord agreement on site GLF 615. All right, uh, John W. Stone is doing some things with our finances, so Bryce, go ahead and explain. Right, just like we mentioned on Monday night, uh, we've already approved uh, an identical agreement such as this for their facility in the East Lip. For whatever reason, they just left out this facility when they uh, had their initial request a couple of months ago. So this, again, would just allow them to uh, secure some funding to operate at this facility. All this right, need a motion. Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Curtis, just there, second by Jim Lafon. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the revision to itemize receipts and leave policies and adopt federal procurement policy. Okay, we've had uh, discussions about these policies. We have been over the, the last uh, several years amending our policies to, to, to reach the, the new policy on how things are. Um, these three policies we have, the itemized receipts policy, um, basically says the same that we've been doing is you have to submit itemized receipts, but there are times in, in this day and age that sometimes you just, you can't get them because everything is electronic. Uh, so it allows for that to take place. Um, as well as, um, what's the next one, itemized receipts, where we are. Then the, the leave policy, so we have, um, use of sick leave and funeral leave policies that are changing. Uh, funeral leave, uh, we are adding that um, you can take funeral leave for um, brother-in-law and sister-in-law, which was not in the policy before. So we're allowing that to happen. And then um, use of sick leave, uh, we're, we're amending some things that allow for someone to take care of their immediate family and not, um, not only, Right now, you can only take sick leave if you're sick. And if you have to take care of a wife, a child, what have you, immediate family, um, then you have to take your annual leave. This would allow you to utilize sick leave uh, for an immediate family member's illness <clears throat> as well. Okay. And then on the, on the federal um, procurement policy, we're basically creating its own policy. There's, um, uh, especially for both for FEMA projects as well as for, um, well, it's part of FEMA as well, but it, port security uh, projects. Um, you have to have federal procurement policies, and we want to make sure that it's clear uh, because anytime we have those type of grants from the federal government, they're always asking for your procurement policy, what's in your policy manual. So we better show them that. Any comments from? All right. All right. Need Thank a motion. You. Got a motion from Mike Collins, second from Johnny Ordorn. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the request from Jerry Savoy to lease T Hanger East Bay. All right, we had a T Hanger that was available 
and uh, Mr. Jerry Sahua would like to lease that, so recommendation to approve that request. All right, need a motion. Mm -hmm. Moved by Mr. Rodney, uh, just clear, second by Mr. Larry Griffin. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we have consider approving the request from AMIC to assign lease GLF 625 to Expeders and Production Services Company, EPSG Logistics. Mr. Shasso. Yes. Um, Omni Environmental Solutions has been having this lease for, for a bit now, um, since uh, 2017, and they are requesting to uh, assign that lease to EPS Logistics. We do have folks from uh, Omni here today, if you have any, um, any questions directly for them. And if, we'll invite you to come up if you want to, but you don't have to say anything. We just wanted to recognize that y'all are here and thank y'all for your longstanding utilization of Port Fouchon for sure. Um, and unless, unless there's any comments or anything, um, recommendation to approve. All right, the motion. Moved by Larry Griffin, second by Mr. Curtis Pierce. Any discussion? Any public comment? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we're getting out of uh, executive committee going to permits and waterways. Members are John uh, Rodney Jusker, chairman, Curtis Pierce, John Eldon, and Chucky Sheridan. Mr. Jusker. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're going to start off by reviewing our permits. Uh, Big Gem Seafood in Lafourche Parish. Proposal to implement and operate an alternative oyster culture form using 12 shell elevators, which are submersible pontoon barges resting on the water bottom. <clears throat> Approximately 0 0.02 acres of water bottom may be impacted as a result of the proposed activity. Revision 1. Project location was changed to Bayou Pierre Eli. Total shell elevators reduced from 12 to 4. Next permit we have is from Daniel Delot Jr. of Fouche Parish. Proposals to install six three pile clusters five feet from original bowhead and a five foot by 20 foot boat dock, approximately 0 0.01 acres of water bottoms may be impacted as a result of the proposed activities. Okay, that completes our permit review. Uh, now we move to consider approving the low bid for removal of sunken vessel and Bayou of food. All right, we had um, six uh, bids for that project. Uh, Plaisance Dragline and Dredging was the low bid for $9,509 even. Recommendation to approve. I got a motion by Mr. Rodney Gisclair, second by Jim Lafont. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Motion passed. Mr. President, that concludes the Permit and Water Waste Committee's report. Thank you, Mr. Jusclair. Next, we're going into construction and development. <clears throat> Committees are Chris Colley, Chairman, Mike Colley, Curtis Spears, and Chucky Sherman. Mr. Colley. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. President. First, we have to consider approving change order number three from Crosby Dredging for a slip D and Bayou Lafouche dredge project. All right, this is, as uh, John Plaison said with GIS Engineering, this is a um, reduction of $1,877,652.50, recommendation to approve. We got a motion by Mr. Chris Colley. Move. Second by Sec Mr. Sorry. Mike <laughs> Colley. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, we have to consider approving substantial completion certificate from Crosby Dredging for the Slip D and Bayou Lafouche Dredge project. This project is substantially complete. Recommendation to approve. Okay. We got a motion from Mr. Johnny Ordon, second by Mr. Larry Griffin. No. Any discussion? Abstain. Oh, abstain, excuse me. <clears throat> second by John Nelson. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed with one abstain by Mr. Larry Griffin. Next we have consider approving change order number four from sea level construction for the airport connector road and bridge. All right, this change order is for an additional 42 calendar days add, added to the contract time for delays caused by Hurricane Ida. Recommendation to approve. All right, got a motion by Mr. Chris Colley, second by Mr. Larry Griffin. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. 
And finally, we have consider approving the lowest responsive bid for the public boat launch bathhouse repairs. Okay, we had a lowest responsive bid of Grand Isle Shipyard LLC for $319,653.05. Recommendation to approve. Okay, I need a motion. Move by Mr. Uh, Ronnie Jiska, second Second. by Mr. Mike Culley. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Mr. President, this concludes the Construction and Development Committee report. All right, thank you, Mr. Colley. Next, we're going into Finance Committee. Members are John Mellison, Jr. Chairman, Larry Griffin, Chris Colley, and Chucky Sherman. Mr. Mellison. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. President. We'll begin by considering approving payments of the June 2022 invoices and recognizing those expenditures over $25,000. We'll begin with line item one, APC construction, $2,000,000. $740,702.72. And that's for the Northern Expansion Phase 3, Slip C Bulkhead Part 2, Line Item 2, Sea Level Construction Incorporated, $1,786,736.46. And that is for the Airport Road and Bridge Connector Project. Item 3. By Lafouche Freshwater District, $999,604.02, and that is for Hurricane Ida cleanup along by Lafouche. Item four, Crosby Dredging, LLC, $836,641.40, and that's for dredging of Slip D and by Lafouche. Item five, GIS Engineering, $175,232.69, and this was several items listed. Hurricane Ida Damage Restoration, the Fushon Island Bridge and Connector Road, GAO Airport Seal Coat, General Engineering Surveying and Consulting, Slip D Bulkhead, and West Fushon Marsh Creation Project. Item six, Onshore Material, LLC, $139,039.79, and that's for the Industrial Mobile Home Park Project at the airport. Item seven, Ascent Aviation Group, $81,889.37, and that is for truck rental and fuel resale at the airport. Item eight, Angelette Piciola LLC, $70,449.39, and that's for the flotation canal mooring dolphins, along with the Fouchon Bridge and Bell Pass Tower Platform. Item nine, PCOLA and Associates, $63,669.20. And that's for the Flotation Canal Pavilion, the Airport Connector Road and Bridge, Slip C1500 Linear Feet of Bulkhead Part 2, the Industrial Trailer Park, Mechanic Shop Repairs, and General Engineering and Permitting. Item 10, Onshore Construction Company, LLC, $50,683.51. And that's for the Flotation Canal Pavilion. One, one quick correction, 57000 57 I apologize. <clears throat> Thank you for catching that, sir. Item 11, Wagaspac Oil Company Incorporated, $36,364.05. And that is fuel for port vehicles and equipment. These expenditures, along with our others, brings us to a grand total of $8,526,225.23. And Mr. President, if I didn't mess that up, I'd like to make a motion we accept these expenditures. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mellison. I got a motion, Mr. Long. Second from Larry Griffin. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Next, Mr. President, as discussed on Monday night, committee meetings, we need to consider approving the January through the June 2022 unaudited financial statements, and I'd like to make a motion we accept these. I got a motion by Mr. John Mellison, second by Mr. Jim Lafon. <laughs> Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. And last on our agenda item for finance, we have Consider approving out-of-state travel and training requests. We have Harbor Police Chief Michael Kindler attending the AAPA Port Security and Smart Port Seminar and Expo in California July 11th through the 14th. Next we have Director Chasson along with Special Counsel Lulin Petrie and Commissioner Johnny Ordarn attending the Offshore Wind Port and Vessel Summit 
in Virginia, September 26th through the 28th. Next we have the AAPA Annual Convention in Florida. And we have Director Chasson, Commissioner Ordorn, Commissioner Colley, Commissioner <clears throat> Melisson, and Commissioner Jimmy LaFont possibly attending. And other commissioners maybe to be determined. And we have IT System Specialist Joseph Colston attending the B-Sides and DEF CON Security Conferences in Nevada, August 8th through the 14th. And let me back up, and convention is October 16th through the 20th. Next, we have Director Chasson attending meetings in Washington, D.C., July 19th through the 22nd. And last we, ha last, we have Harbor Police Corporal Scott Bynum attending the FBINAA Mastering the Leadership Challenge of <laughs> Law Enforcement Course 2 in Texas, July 31st through August 5th. And Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion we accept these out-of-state travel and training requests. All right, I got a motion from Mr. John Nelson, second from Mr. Chris Colley. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passed. Mr. President, this concludes the Finance Committee report. All right. Thank you, Mr. Melisol. Next, we have any other business? Any public comment? All right, for, for, I want to say something. Um, one of our employees lost a loved one a week or so ago, and I don't want to mention his name, but will y'all please keep him and his family in your prayers? He, uh, he really, is, when you lose a loved one, it's hard, but please, as a poor employee, please keep him and his family in your prayers. All right. I got a motion from Mr. Jeremy LaFoe, second from Mr. Johnny Ordon to adjourn. Any discussion? Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Okay. Thanks everyone for coming to our port meeting. We all enjoy all the summer and be safe out there in the water. Ladies and gentlemen.